start with dehazing for us, moving my sliders. Which didn't affect too much, but it's okay. Highlights are spiking a little bit if I'm looking over here at my histogram in the upper right corner. See that long line right there? That's the highlights. And you see it's uh, pretty long up there in the sky.
and now that I look at it, I don't want it too blue because if you look like it right there in the center, it's sort of golden. Yeah, this just ain't working out. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and then maybe I try to turn my mic up some. Do y'all hear me now? I appreciate the folks in the chat hopping in. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so we'll say uh, recording devices. Mic check, mic check. There's my mic. That's working. So you hear me now?
I didn't understand the chat. I'm sorry. So we hit OK there. OK, sweet. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> all I did was turn my volume up and it went to mute. That's crazy. Must be um, something going on with YouTube. All right. So back to this here shot. Uh, like I was saying, because I know I'm going to be doing a bunch of different frames. The first part of my edit is just sort of quick and dirty. Uh, I'll do a little more heavy lifting near the end. But right now, I just want to try to make sure it's not a lot of noise in it. Make sure the colors are semi-decent. And um, got my camera profile squared away and whatnot. Exposure. You know, just really, really quick basic stuff. Alright, so. But let me check this white balance too. See, I like my shots to be a little bit cooler. I don't always default to the proper white balance. You know, that's just a preference for me. And I don't think these black levels are right. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that right there. So now I will just go ahead and do a sync. So I'll highlight all of these at the bottom, do a sync. There. So now all of these other shots got the same editing process to them. And then we'll start the fun going to Photoshop. Uh, that was shot with a with my smartphone. This was with my Pixel 2. Pixel 2 XL. I love the camera on that on that phone. You know, people will talk about what camera is the best and this and that. And don't get me wrong, I I suffer from techno lust, and I like to have the latest and greatest technology but at the end of the day it comes down to your composition and uh you know a little bit a little bit of post-processing too in the presentation you know i have you know i've sold prints you know but i've actually sold prints that were shot with a smartphone you know and the customer they they didn't know they had no idea, but they thought it was pretty enough to order and print it. <laughs> and it's funny, I was thinking earlier today because I'm I, I'd like to get get another camera, but right now I'm a little a little cash poor. <laughs> and I thought about this one cat I know that's got a um a five D Mark Three, I believe. Nice camera, you know. For his day, it was one of the top of the lines. But this dude's shots, they, they, I never really thought his shots were that great. And it's because composition and, and processing, you know, it, it just, they all look like snapshots, you know? So we can't get caught up in the tech if we don't have any type of, uh, composition prowess all right so I, I pulled all those shots in and uh, I'm gonna make these a long exposure but first I gotta go ahead and align them because I was standing there and shot this handheld I wasn't on a tripod so you're definitely gonna see some things shift it around a little bit and I'll just have to crop out where, to, where they're not lined up. Okay. Yeah, see you can as still as I was trying to be I still ended up missing <laughs> proper alignment. So 
going to go ahead and do some crop to get rid of all of the transparencies. And I think that's about right. Pull this up a little bit more. And even though I'm cropping this down, it's not going to matter too much because I'm going to expand it anyway. OK, so now everything's lined up properly. Next step. Uh, image image size and then I'm going to change this to the nearest neighbor and I usually like to do about 170 percent and you see this thing went up to 6,000 pixels or so really really big file but I like doing this because it, it gives me a little more detail to work with if you do it do this right Yeah, I mean, I'm zoomed in on that and that looks pretty doggone good. That's zoomed in pretty tight, too. But you can see the detail is it's it's clearly there. So that gives me a little more breathing room as far as the post processing goes. All right. Now, this is where the fun begins with Photoshop having to do a lot of math. I'm going to convert all of these to smart objects. Overall, Photoshop still scares the crap out of me because there's so many different tools inside of it. But it is nice having stuff like smart objects so you can go in and, and try something out. And if it doesn't work with the smart object being there, you can just very easily put it back in to its original state. Yeah, it's still thinking. Because you got to think, I just made about 10 images, 6,000 pixels wide. And now it's going to put them all together. <laughs> Poor computer is like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> See that? Well, the CPU ain't that bad. It's doing quite all right. It's just a lot of work. And again, this is shot with a uh, smartphone. All right, question in there. What do you think about Affinity Photo? I honestly have no opinion of Affinity Photo. Um, they sent me a free trial some time back and I never got around to it. And then when I tried to, to get in touch with them about letting me try it out again, they were like, nah, that's OK. So I haven't I haven't gone back in there yet. I can't even remember how much it costs, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. I heard it's it's, it's rather intuitive and gets the job done. Do you use affinity? I also like to use Snapseed and I like to use Pixlr. I haven't used those two as as much recently um, because Photoshop and Lightroom has just gotten a little bit easier for me in my workflow. You know, as I'm doing something in Lightroom and I figure out um, I can't do it anymore, I hop on over to Photoshop because it has that dynamic link. And then when I'm done, I just go back to Lightroom. I use Affinity Photo pretty much exclusively. That's what's up. That's what's up. There's another product out there for free. It's a Photoshop um, alternative and it's web based. I'm going to try that out and I'll probably do a video review of that here in the next coming weeks. Uh, I think it's called Photo P or something like that, but it's it's 
totally free and it's supposed to be as functional as Photoshop as far as having layers and things like that that you can work with. But we'll see. And I think that's a nice idea for people that don't want to pay for the subscription. Holy crap, this thing is still thinking. <laughs> I'm sorry for the boring live stream. Good grief. <laughs> I didn't think Photoshop would take this long. Maybe if I didn't pull in all of these images, it wouldn't have taken this long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh man, that's a lot of images. So CW Daily, what's your editor of choice? Hybrid Media is using Affinity Photo. Okay, it finally finished. Sweet. Okay, so Affinity will cost you forty bucks. Yeah, that's a good rate. That's a really that's a really good rate for a piece of software. Because I know I pay way more than that per year for the Adobe Suite. <laughs> All right, so I got my smart object created. If you look at this layer here, it has a little tiny little spot on the lower left corner that lets me know this is now a smart object and I can play around with filters and things like that and it'll all be fairly non-destructive. So this is when we fake the long exposure. Um, but first, I'm going to make a copy of this and now that way I'll have it you know as a backup in case something really goes wrong and I'll just call this sharp well I'm not gonna do that I'll just say baseline if I can spell right it don't matter I know what it is and now we'll let Photoshop do some of its math so you go to layer smart objects stack mode oh shoot I hate it when it does that layer smart object stack mode and you click mean and watch what happens this water right here should turn all silky and stuff supposed to any day now capture one pro Ooh, nice I saw that uh, Capture One had a, I want to say I saw they had an update here recently. I've thought about trying out Capture One for tethering. Because Lightroom was really slow with tethering. Man, it was really slow. But I haven't tried it since um, the recent update. But every now and then when you when I'm doing my product shots or or headshots or something I I, I, I try to tether because it's just a lot easier and faster okay so there it finished thinking and the water got silky smooth but if you look at these trees this is a total mess but fortunately there's a fix for that and it's called a layer mask so we can put a layer mask on there and I need to get my Wacom tablet because I'm about to brush away all of that blurry stuff and since I have this layer mask it's going to let me pull in this baseline area here that we know is already crispy sh and sharp so I'll just brush away like that so now my trees get detail. And you can just brush over whatever you want to brush over. For me, I specifically want the trees to be sharpened. Ooh. 
Oh, good point. Sony uses those, what is it, A ARW files for RAW? I used to have a Sony NEX T, NEX 5T. It's a little mirrorless. Took some nice photos, but man, mirrorless cameras are just too small for me. I need something with some girth. So I have big hands. And if I'm not comfortable, I'm just not going to shoot well. But I know mirrorless is the craze and everybody wants to go mirrorless because it's smaller and lightweight and more portable, yada, yada, yada. I carry a backpack. It doesn't matter. If it was a mirrorless, it's going to go in the backpack. If it's a full size DSLR, it's going to go in the backpack. So portability, it's not that big an issue. It's more about how does it feel in my hands. I looked at the A7 III, I believe, and yeah, it was a little bigger. It was a little bigger. Now those, what was it, the A65s, that, that, that series, those were tiny, tiny, tiny. But I love the technology behind it. It's just, you know, eliminating that extra space. I get it. But I just got to have something that I could feel. Ooh, Olympus. Are you guys seeing the difference this brush is making <laughs> with that layer mask? See if I zoom in a little bit. See the trees are all blurry. This this these leaves are blurry. And this will instantly quote unquote sharpen them up with the layer mask. Yeah, RX one hundred. That's what's up. But at the end of at the end of the day, it all boils down to you know what works best for you. I'll tell you right now, I'm not gonna be one of those those photographers that's hating on people that use this camera versus that camera, this lens versus that lens. You know, it's just whatever works for you. I've had so many people in the past just want to sway me one way or another and I just had to tell them look I'm happy with you know with doing what I'm doing you know just just leave it be or you'd be online and you look at stuff that people are po posting and publishing and then all of the comments are like you should have been shooting and yada 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 and I'm like, man, why don't y'all give these people a break? They didn't even ask you for all of that. They were just proud of what they did. They didn't say I need some assistance. They just shared something because they were proud of it and it gave them a little bit of joy. Stop bringing all of your manufacturer wars to this stuff. You know, just drives me nuts, man. Freaking Internet. Man, if you shoot in film, you are, whew, that's what's up. That That's some skill. <laughs> you shoot in film, you, you got to get it right. <laughs> it's a whole different world versus the digital, you know. See the difference this is making. I know this is tedious, but it's always worth it. It's always worth it. Now I got to be careful right here because I don't want it to get too much of the water. Oh, nice. You know, I used to host a smartphone photographer's community 
years ago. Because I felt like, you know what, smartphone cameras should get some love. And I had a lot of fun doing that, but it ended up being a whole lot more work than I wanted it to be. You know, I was running the community and moderating it and all that. And then I was doing weekly podcast, had it on a website where you can download the audio or the video. And I was editing the video and, you know, I put a lot of time into that thing, man, and tried to keep it as engaging as possible in the community. But the the energy in the community just just started dying. I don't know what happened. Um, people weren't paying attention. I was doing I shouldn't say I we were doing weekly challenges you know, to just to try to keep people interested and try to help people learn different techniques, you know, because in the community, I didn't like the fact that, you know, you post a shot in there and there was really no kind of learning scenario with it. It was always just, that's a nice shot. I like that shot. That's a nice shot. You know, that, I'm not getting anything from that. Tell me what you like about it. Tell me what you don't like about it. That was the kind of setting that that I was hoping for. And we eventually got that, you know, and then there were some members in there that I that I love dearly that were just seasoned veterans. And they brought a lot to the table as far as just knowledge about photography and theory and things of that nature. And it just helped the members grow with their photography game helped me a lot helped me a lot but I did that for a couple years and at the end of the day man I was like I'm I'm a little exhausted with editing all these these videos each week and putting them up on YouTube I think I still have them on YouTube in a little playlist and um the community wasn't participating. They were they were showing up late to stuff, and it was a little a little bizarre. And I remember after I announced that I was shutting it down, I put up a post warning everybody, you know, that if you sent images to be published on the website, and you need them back or or you can't find them, you need to go ahead and start downloading them from the site now because I will be shutting the site down at such and such date. And nobody read it until it was too late. (laughs) And they they were like, I went to the website and it's not up anymore. And I say, no, it's not because I killed the website. Did you watch the last episode where I said goodbye? (laughs) Oh, drove me nuts. But yeah, I I believe I have a playlist on my YouTube channel called Smartphone Photographers. I don't I don't think I got rid of those because I thought the videos were still useful for people out there trying to learn. And especially when you were using the phones from three, four years ago, the phones from three or four years ago were nowhere near as powerful as they are now. But you still get some nice shots. And you can still tell a great story. Uh Uh-oh. See, I went too far on this one. See how I brushed too much on the water? I want to smooth that back out. That's what I'm saying. You got to be careful sometimes. Don't want to overdo it. And I just overdid it again. There we go. That's better. I appreciate you folks hopping in and watching tonight, hanging out with me. It's Friday night. I know y'all folks are normally out partying and enjoying Whiskey Friday, things like that. But you decided to hang out with me and watch me do what I love to do create content 
No, I mean, okay, I think I have gotten all of the details on this done. Looks like it. I'm just sort of spot checking now to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> this is a pie. This is a party. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. See, I missed a few spots right there. Do you guys use Wacom tablets? Do y'all own one? <laughs> I wouldn't be anywhere else. That's funny. I got to tell you, a couple of years back, I got my myself a Wacom tablet and man, it's it's been so much easier with my post processing having this thing. And I just bought the little cheap one. I bought the uh I believe you pronounce it as into us into us and I don't even think I paid a hundred bucks for it and um, I mean it's just a little plastic stylus or pen and doesn't take any batteries you just plug the tablet in via USB and off you go you can use it like a mouse or you can use it like a brush right now I'm using the one that they sent me to review and so far I like it okay it's not much different from what I already have other than it's it has Bluetooth capability but the performance feels right about the same for me from a photography standpoint I'm not an illustrator so I can't really speak on that yeah nice into us three I reviewed the Cintiq Pro several months ago. Holy crap, that thing is cool. Now, if you're going to be a mobile editor, it's not all practical, but it's it's a cool, cool device if you're just sitting at an editing station. Okay, so I think I'm done in Photoshop with this image. That looks way better than the original one see that's the original and you notice it's got the ripple detail and the river and all of that but setting it up as a long exposure I think that gives it a little more drama at least from the water standpoint anyway alright so now I'm gonna go back to Lightroom and do the finishing touches save and it might take it a second because it's huge mongus still thinking there you know what no I'm not done with this I need to do I need to do a high pass filter on this thing so let's do that too Ba, 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 ba. What did I want to do here? Raster size. Here we go. And uh, why am I having a brain fart right now? What the heck is wrong with me? Oh, flatten, duh. Merge, I mean. All right. So I'm ready to go on that. Let's put a high pass filter on it just to make it a little bit sharper, detail wise. And my dog is up, shaking and making noise into the microphone. We'll make this smart object. 
Oh, is it going to take forever to make a smart object? Oh, man, I love this new computer. It is so much faster. <laughs> it's so much faster. Um, I really see the performance boost inside of Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro was really choking and struggling. And um, having a new CPU and having a new graphics card just... It's night and day performance wise in Premiere Pro. I hate I had to spend all of that money, but it's part of the gig, you know, it, it's got to keep your workflow going. Because if you take too long, clients will get pissed. Filter, blur. Gaussian blur. That looks all right. Filter, other high pass. So we're going to sharpen this up a little bit in the details. We'll try 13 for now. And it's a little too sharp. Mm, I don't know. We'll go back. A linear light. Yeah. You gotta be careful. What is 10? You know, I don't know. So if I did it three, that's really bad. If I did it five, that's not much better. Six, five, eight, Okay, eight and a half, maybe. Yeah, that looks a little better. That's sharp. Hit OK. All right, so now we can do a comparison. Yeah, that's got much better clarity. Okay, now I'll save it and I'll go back to Lightroom. The computer cost me, it was, it was pretty expensive, dude. Um, it was almost two grand for everything. Store, CPU, the memory, and I still need more memory. I still need to spend another, maybe another $150, $160 to get an additional 16 gigs of RAM. Um, Cause I couldn't, I couldn't afford to get any more RAM at the time. Right now, I'm only running 16 gigabytes. And if you look, that is not enough memory to run right now. It's not. I need to run at least 24, but I'm not gonna do that. I'll run 32. Yeah, and the problem is Hard drives cost a lot of money. Well, not hard drives. Memory costs a lot of money. And graphics cards cost a lot of money. That's, that's where the bulk of the problem is with getting computers. And the thing is, I saved several hundred dollars by going through a custom build site. I used to just order them a part at a time, you know. But graphics cards cost so much now it's making it a lot more difficult to just build one on your own in the house like I used to do okay so now I'm gonna do the finishing touches on this one bring that highlight down bring the shadows up black levels down exposure was a little overexposed to my liking right about here should be good. I like that. 
Bring the shadows up some more. And the white. Okay. Could barely touch the clarity because I already sharpened it inside of Photoshop, so shouldn't need much clarity adjustments. Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Check my noise. Shouldn't be too noisy. Eh. It ain't great, but you can always reduce it. Not bad at all. And definitely needs a vignette on it. I don't know about y'all, but I like to overdo the vignette as my starting point like that. And then I just sort of back off to see what works. Yeah, I totally agree, Mr. Daly. 32 gigs is like, it's a must. Okay. Man, I wish that tree wasn't in the way. <laughs> but, you know, I was out just getting some cardio and walking and I said, huh, I might as well shoot something and pulled out my phone and I just shot. I'm going to try to straighten this up a little bit. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the um, image was cricket. See if you look back here at this horizon line, it's cricket. So I just straighten it out just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, man, I saw that that near death experience. That's pretty daggum funny. <laughs> and it's only funny because it survived you know what I'm saying I wouldn't be laughing if it didn't survive <laughs> and that stuff is going to happen that's, that's part of the game it's going to happen alright now isn't that pretty right there I like playing around with the uh, color calibration with the orange and teal. Sometimes you can overdo it. You just got to find that happy medium. Now, if I really wanted to get creative, I could try to cool that water off some, but I'm not going to do that. I'm totally fine with that water looking like this. But if I wanted to cool the water off, I could just do a little adjustment brush, turn the temperature down, and just brush it in. Oh, we need more flow. Here we go. Just brush in cooler temperatures, but I don't think I want to do that because that's really, really tedious and I don't want to put that much work in. See the difference? Man, those profiles are slick. You know, if you're shooting in raw, man, it, it, it's it's slick, the different options that are out there. And you got it on um, Lightroom Mobile, too. Man, it is. That's really, really slick. There. Well, folks, I think this image is 
Done. Good to go. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. And since I like it a lot, I'm going to hit it with my little green marker. Whoops. Sorry. Wrong one. Set it color label as green, like so. And then I'll hop over here to my library. And I will stick it up on my Flickr profile. And submit it to Adobe Stock. You know, because why not? <laughs> Somebody just may use it as a stock image. In Capture Pro, you can select and mask by choosing the color and then changing the water. Yep. That's the kind of stuff that I would normally do inside of Photoshop. Um, every now and then I do it in Lightroom. It depends on the scene. Um, I did one. Actually, it was the last drone editing video that I did. I did it similar to what you're talking about inside of Lightroom. What do you mean it can't be found? What? Original image cannot be found. How is that? I'm looking at it right there, dude. <laughs> Whatever. I'm not going to worry about that. And we'll go ahead and uh, export this thing. General. Move it on down. Cool. Well, that's it. All right, party people. I thank you all for uh, hanging out tonight with me on this here Friday night. I think I'm going to fire up a video game or something and grab another beer and just chill out the rest of this evening and uh, step away from the computer. No, I don't know. Part of me wants to play a video game. I don't know. It's all good. But thank you folks for watching. I will probably put this video up um, with some post processing, you know, a little editing in there and speeding through some things like that, just so people can use it as a resource. If you enjoyed watching this video, hit the like button and hit the share button. And I'll just pass this thing along. Thank you all so, so very much. And um, I'll catch you guys over the weekend. I'm sure I'll see you out there. <laughs> Y'all take care. Oh, I got to go over here to close it.